recording. Okay, so today uh, we have we had enough with uh, with grammar last time around because we defined a bunch of stuff. Uh, and today we're gonna parse it for real. We already parsed kinds, and I think the easiest, the second easiest one, aside from kinds, is definitely the lets. Uh, so I created a let.hs file inside the parser folder, and then we're gonna we have the let p parser, which is basically trying to parse all possible let, lets that we have. Uh, I should exclude the star because we don't have implemented the star yet. And then what we need to do is to write a piece of code in uh, with the lets with the let block, right? Actually, we don't have the definition in the in the grammar of the let. This should be very fast, so let's go here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the let is just... Okay, so let's go to the ADT questions. first. So the let is composed out of a kind, then a, a list of tuples, then a, a body. Uh, yeah, it's not really a kind, right? It's just the... It's misleading. I don't like this name, kind, because it, uh, it's We can confusing. change it to a, another word than I uh, thought. Let sort. Let sort. Yeah, okay. Which is... Okay. It's a let type, but that's fine. Uh, uh, this probably will break something. Yeah, of course. Uh, oh, it's because of this sort. Mm -hmm. uh, and are we good? No. Okay, the evaluator and the typer now are complaining, which is fine, just fine. Evaluator. Okay, cool, done. So going back to the, our parsing stuff. So what we want to parse, we want to parse this. Uh, well, as far as I can tell, it's kind of the same shit, right? Yes. The only difference is the possible word that you're going to have. So instead of doing this approach of using a choice with, di with separate ones, we're just going to do like that. Uh, and just do uh, different parses for strings. Okay, so what is the first thing? The first thing is opening the limiter and then closing the limiter. And then we're going to have two possible alternatives, which is going to be the let. Uh, plus, and we're also going to have a let, uh, that's the thing, we, we, do you want let in like this, or just the let in could be, could be the normal let? Uh, I think let in could be, I'm kind of thinking it's better to type, because, well, it gives you, I don't like, like, hiding possibilities, you know? I agree, but then I, I would kind of ask to make this... Oh, by the way, don't use the, the alternative there. Use the choice. No, but I think in here the alternative will work just fine. <laughs> I, I'm serious, though. Uh, uh, I think it will work. So, okay, let's do like that. So, let in here. There's a, This is pointed to the wrong direction because now this matters. Because now we want to pick... Uh, let's sort. We want to pick that, right? So we have open the limiter, and then we have the possible two strings, and then we have the spaces. Then what do we have? Uh, this is going to be the kind already. This is going to be the kind already. Hmm. Wait. Uh, wait a second. Let me think. So we don't need a monad in this case. Mm. We can just do yes. let sort. Yeah. Uh, with this, but I think this will require parentheses, which basically means that we need to import let sort. Why do you think I'm gonna grab the import? Yeah, let me go back there. Oh man. Right. 
Okay, so what is the type of lead sword? Oh! Oh, okay. Actually, this lead sword should be just the... No, this is wrong. Sorry for that. This is totally wrong. Yeah, like... So this should be like this, man. Oh, it's gonna be pretty fancy. Yeah, and from this we map, yes. Yes. You're getting faster, you see? Uh, wait, I think I added parentheses in the wrong place. Uh, it's like this. And we also have the plus. So it's this. Yeah, but this is wrapped in a parser. So... Wait, now it is complaining about something. Uh, let's see. No, oh no, this is Hlink suggestions, to, su doing suggestions for us. So, okay, that's not what we we kind of want. And I noticed that my LSP is not working, so that's gonna be a hard. This is gonna be a hard. Oh, we both hard don't session. have LSP, but yeah. that's fine. No, that's <laughs> that's not that fine, but <laughs> but okay, I guess. Uh, I because LSP if you think about mean. it, this is a. Because I think this is not type check because this is a parser. Open the limit is a parser. The string is a parser, but then we are f mapping to 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 become a parser of uh, let sort. Yes. Which is correct. Yeah, it is. Co this is correct. Okay, so this is going to uh, be the let sort p. It's complaining about something redundant. Oh, it's just a each link to yeah, each, each link is doing a suggestion to, for us. But I will not read that here. Because, uh, well, we, we don't, this is the naive, naive way of doing it. Then we have this guy. This guy is probably a many. Isn't it better to put a plus here? Like, literally a plus? Yeah, it would be, but then I would be triggered by having the let in like this. Oh, what about let minus and let plus? <laughs> <laughs> what uh, about okay, let least... this? Let me see. Let E... That's weird. Letty. What about this? <laughs> or just Letty, like written. Wait, you mean Letty. like this? Yeah, uh, I don't like this. Yeah, Dude, that's... It's not that bad to have like one like this and the other with a plus. Uh, it's very, it's kind of inconsistent. I don't know how I feel about it, but well, yeah, it's, not it's an option. It could be worse. Oh yeah, definitely could be worse. Uh, I have a strong feeling that this let sort p will not type check, but uh, I don't have uh, uh, LSP working. So anyway, okay. But now we have the this guy, right? Mm -hmm. This guy is composed out of many uh, tuples of. Yeah, but whatever we do, we need delimiters, right? We need yeah, delimiters. of a variable and expression. It's we could use like a this. between in this case. Uh, because you can do between. Uh, okay, this, dude, this case is very easy actually. It's always a variable. It's all many tuples of variable expression. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where are, you, are we using the between, man? I already kind of forgot. I types. don't know, but we can do it here. Uh, let me see. Is it the args that you're doing to parse that? That's the thing. Oh, here. Okay, so here's an example. And I remember the between. Yeah, the between is just between, it's and like then this. the first parser, yes. So between, open the limiter, then close the limiter, then many one. Oh, this is almost almost that. Um, so let's call issue. content. Let's call instead of content. Let's call this binds. Yes, good. Uh, okay, so what is a bind parser? It's a between of open the limiter and close the limiter, which is what we want. Um, then we have a many one. I don't remember anymore. The many one is the many that requires. It doesn't need to one. be many one, but it could be many here. I don't think it can be many because then we would allow the let yeah. block to have no binds. Yeah, what's the problem? Does that make any sense to have a let oh, that does well, not we, do the binds? I, I don't see the usage, but that's not a wrong. Well, okay, you're right. So, okay, we can do a many. 
Then, then we need to parse uh, the, 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 the couple. So what is a couple? It is another between. Between. Open the limiter to enclose the limiter. Yes. Of a variable and space and an expression. Of a variable, space, and an expression. Yes. Between uh, the limiters. I don't know if the expression really entails that it is between the limiters. I think so, right? Uh, just a sec. E. Oh, that's actually... Okay, so I think we want variable generic. Let's take a look. Oh, yeah, it's variable generic. Okay, so let me grab the imports of these things. So... Parser utilities, let's import that. Uh, variable generic, because this is any sort of identifier, including emojis, that's important because we almost spent three hours doing that. Uh, then this is composed out of a variable, out of um, var variable generic, which is any identifier. And, so this must be applicative, and uh, an expression. So, oh, we have a problem. Ah, oh, no. This is, an, this is an expression P, right? This is an expression parser, parser for expressions. We don't, we can't have this function in this file. Because this file will be imported by the expression.hs file. But in order to have expression p, we need to import it here. So we have cyclic dependencies. Yeah. Which means that we need to pick this code and put it in here. This is going to be a problem in .NET, by the way. I don't know what kind of witchcraft they do. I think it's just... Um, there is a way list. of not having this problem in Haskell as well. But I don't I don't want to bother. And I'm uh, surprised you have this in Haskell. Because it's lazy. So... I, I would guess you wouldn't need to define... It's the... because JHC, JHC takes a look, like, before doing any sort of crap, it checks for cyclic imports. And if you have a graph of, in, like, includes, and you have a cycle... cyclo uh, And a graph with a cycle, then it's going to complain. But anyway, so... Yeah, so there's that. There's a problem, though. Uh... There is a problem. Is that a problem or am I going crazy? Because we have everything that we need. We know how to sort kinds of uh, mm -hmm. sorts of lets. We know how to sort the... the... Uh, the couples. And then we just put that in the many. Then... Then... We just need to do this peer here, and then we should be done. Are you following, Magetta? Mm-hmm. Okay. So... Oh, I'll l let me look at the file here. Uh... Wait, what the heck? Menu. So let me quit this just a second. Okay. Uh, okay. We should have one of these parsers already done at some point. Wait, which one? Because as far as I can tell, the final answer for this thing, it will be something along the lines of uh, elet. Uh, mm -hmm. fmap to um, a let sort b um, applicative binds, uh, binds. Uh, isn't there something else there's the body as well oh there's the body also so we also well, we also should have uh... oh we no, don't but the body do expression this. p yeah uh I am very surprised if this is just working and this complaint is just actually complaining. I would be I would be tremendously surprised. There's no way. Yeah, there's no way. Okay. 
So the first thing that is complaining is that we don't have that Adlet available, which is correct. So let's let me see our stream here. Adlet. Okay. Next. Okay, next. Okay, so now we have a few other errors to tackle. Uh, okay, I know how to search this one. Uh, oh, import the stuff for me from it there, right? Yeah, uh, oh, we let's also sort yeah. this. This should have provided us the plus and the in. Okay, what else do we have? Okay, now we are talking. So we have the variable generic being a problem. Um, uh, why could it match the type? Yeah, no, this feels wrong. We are forgetting something, 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 because an, an applicative should should always be followed by a by an F map. Oh, it should be. Oh, there's really a tuple. A... There's yeah. a tuple crap. Oh yeah, I forgot. Okay, so it's gonna be. So that's what I think is weird, like an applicative there's. All right. Yeah, this. Okay. Okay, two errors though. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's start with this one. So now it's complaining that wouldn't match type let sort with B. whatever is this. But this is also B. using the, the, the very weird applicative alone notation. Uh, so there is something that I am missing. There is something that I'm missing. How is it? oh dude isn't it matching like this? Let me type here. Isn't it turning this? Like uh let sort then bind then No 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 it's not and I can explain why because if you take a look on the e let uh stuff So let me go back where you are which is here if you take a look on here, right, you're gonna notice that we have a let sort. Yes, I know which that it has three this. things. Yes. Then we have a list, which should be the binds, right? So no, the binds are here. And then because this is a function, right? This in Haskell. Oh, the okay, I get it. I get it. I'm just thinking about this, applic this applicative here. Yeah, this applicative is saying, okay, pick whatever is the result of this guy, f map this. Yeah, and but what is the result of this applicative, this applicative, this? Don't we need to curry or something? Maybe it's the parentheses. Don't know. It is possible. There's. Oh yeah, <laughs> the parentheses solve the problem. <laughs> what the heck? Man? Yeah, it's because it doesn't make sense, right? It's exactly what you said. What is this? This doesn't make any sense. But, oh, but this oh, okay, makes it's, 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 sense because then mm -hmm. it's picking this, applying to this, and the result of that is being yeah, applied to this. This is not purple, but yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah. Okay, I'm surprised. We we didn't do any sparsing stuff for a long time, and we managed to do it. Okay, so where did this, oh, this, this go? This it should go to here. Dude, oh man, that e type abstraction. Let's do that now, please. Okay, let me just go to the org file and put it as done, the lattice. So, okay, lattice. more two dones. Now we have yeah, the e-type abstraction, e-type application. Now I just need to test all If this. I'm not mistaken, the really e-type application is already working because we kind of, like, we did a fusion of both. Oh, I think so, yes. We did, yeah, the expression, uh, expression application parser. It is. Uh, it has. It has this F map here of left and right, because it can potentially be. And then we are doing a case in order to figure out if it's in the application or it should be a, or something else entirely. So, yeah, yeah. And then it's using this either function to the to do, to define if it should be the folding with the E application or E type application. So the E type application, I think, is also done. So let's go to the parse.org and put that as done. Okay, three more to go. E type abstraction and E type uh, and then the new fancy ultra fancy types, which is the type ultra abstraction and type, type application. The ultra fancy type is just like. 
dependent types? No, that is the supreme fancy types. Uh, the ultra fancy is just the type apli ab type abstraction and type application that we added to the type types data type uh, two sessions ago or something like that. That the, when we added the kind checking. Uh, but okay, so the, we need to do it, this guy line thirty on the expression.hs file. We need to do expression type abstraction which is at the moment undefined, which is cool. Okay, so I don't even remember anymore. What is a neat type abstraction? Is that the for all stuff? From what I remember, the for all we already did on the application. No, wait, wait, wait. Hmm, wait, now I'm confused. And that's actually something I very important. That the e type application is what wraps an application with a context. Oh, we also that didn't do the for all, man. The for all is also undefined here in the types.hs inside the parser. Awesome. So in, well, let me let me go back. Uh, T for all. Look at the grammar. Don't we have that? No, we don't have the for all in the in this stuff in the in the grammar. We should do the, those uh, before going to parser. So if you go to the grammar. Uh, yeah, we don't have, we don't, we definitely don't have. You see here, uh, line 31 of the grammar, we have type for all, type abstraction, type application. They don't have uh, their definitions. You only have for type variable, we, and type arrow, type atom, which is the integer or a boolean. Are you using booleans or are you using bools, by the way? We are using yeah. bulls. Okay. Uh, so let's go to the grammar. We are using bulls. And this guy also received a new member, which is the rationals and the unit. Yeah, it's very easily extensible, this crap. I'm very surprised. Nathan was totally right. <laughs> okay, so we need to define a for all. We need to define the type for all, the type abstraction, and type application in the grammar. Those are not done yet. So let's start with the type for all. What is a type for all, Magita? So a uh, for all is just the... Let's, let's go let's to the all, I would say let's go with... Okay, but I would say define the stuff we want to parse first, right? Yeah, no, you can start writing that down. We have a session on the grammar, like... Uh... Oh, we did that already, I guess. No, no, we didn't. We did, we did functions, records, values, ADT. No, 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 I'm saying on the... F on, if you go to samples, examples, we have one. Oh, yeah, the, this is correct. Man, imagine the moment where the Visual Studio Code will, will, will say, oh, we have extensions for with files.sw and then we have our own ex highlighting stuff there. I can already, I can already <laughs> spot the icon of the extension. <laughs> I can already spot the icon of the extension. It's silverware mode on Emacs, man. It's going to be glorious. <laughs> anyway, so we have an example here on line 10. Mm -hmm. So you are you were correct indeed. I'll be what happy is this, in the way? moment we have a linter, by the way. Uh, okay, so this is the type it is abstracting over to, to this argument. Okay, so this picks a type a type variable t. Yes. Right? And then and it, it takes returns... one, two, three, four, five t's and then returns an integer. Yeah, but if you take a look on the types.hs on our AST, the t for all info needs to receive three things. It needs to receive a piece of text, it needs to receive a kind, it needs to receive a type. Let's see, t for all info, which is a text, which is the variable, so like label. Yeah. A kind. I think the kind is the newest member because I remember yes, Nathan talking about is. doing kind annotation, type on kind notations. Mm -hmm. I almost said kind type annotations, but it's not. It's and kind annotations. And the last type, I think, is... No, 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 wait. This type is just like the bunch of variables with the yeah, arrow. This is an arrow. Yes, yes, it's just an arrow. Yeah, so we just have to define... We have a kind notation here. 
And that's pretty much it for our type for all parsing stuff. Okay. Oh, this is disgusting. Why? <laughs> the syntax is just getting out of hand, man. No, we, we, this is the time to define the syntax, man. Can't I make it smaller? Like, let's see. If it's a for all arrow, can't no, no, I make it? No, 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 but you are, this example is bad because this is an a gigantic arrow. You need to imagine like this. Yeah, this, this is the is easiest wrong, example it? possible. But this is wrong, isn't it? No, it's not. We have a... Uh, Where we, is the arrow? We don't need the arrow. We need a type. And this is a type variable. No, oh, but wait. The other example was already wrong. The kind of this is this. No, no, no. I w it was just for illustration purposes. Oh, okay, I was not okay, talking okay. seriously. <laughs> it was only for illustration purposes. Uh, but anyway, this is the simplest possible at for all ever. Uh, the external parentheses, this is already built into the types. All the types are surrounded by parentheses. So what we actually have freedom to modify is this. So what do we want to modify that there? Uh, good question. Let me just check if our kind uh, pars uh, parsing it's already counting for parentheses, and it's not. That's great. Um... I think the kinds are. Oh no! Wait, the arrow p. Let's check the arrow p parser. Oh no, the arrow p is it is uh, counting for parentheses. Okay, so if you have a single star, that star should not be surrounded by parentheses uh, at the moment. Then, so this is correct. This pa pa kind here. Yeah. So, what do you want to change there? I, don't know, man. I think that what we need a separator between the kind and the type, man. Yes. Because we already have a separator of the type variable and the kind, which is the dot. Uh, I could be. Uh... <laughs> 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 this syntax, no malbars, no malbars. No, this syntax is no, no, no. There's no way we're gonna do that. No. Let me let me put you a hello world in malbars. I was imagining something like that. Hello. Here, Malbos. Malbos, actually, yes, not Malbos. It's from Dante. Here. I'll paste on the code. So this is the syntax of, this is a hello world. Oh, this is a successor of brainfuck, good luck. It's actually mm -hmm. worse because it has more symbols. Yes. <laughs> this is worse than APL, man. What the heck? What about... Nathan would be like... The, the happiest person right now because he would he would say oh we are yeah, adding like some drop. javascript uh, essence to our code oh no 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 i don't like this please stop no <laughs> <laughs> oh man let me think let me think we need to escape this no, haskell also this? uses the double arrow for stuff uh... or just this Oh, it's even worse. Or as a symbol. What about this? What about this? Semicolon. Yeah, okay. That's not that bad. Okay. Could be worse. Nathan will hate it, but okay. <laughs> nah, I, I, I don't give a shit. I don't give a damn. <laughs> will totally hate this. But okay, I let's go to the grammar less. now. And let's copy our example here. Because we... I always, this is very good, helpful. Okay, so the first question is, how did we do a condition before? Okay, so it's a left delimiter, left delimiter, white space, star, then we have for all, then we need to have a type variable, which we already have, which is great. Uh, this needs to be a plus, because the for all cannot be touching the other stuff. Uh, then we have a type variable. 
then we have a dot. Uh, I'm gonna allow the, the person to have spaces. Although I, I kind of didn't want to, but okay. Then we have the kind. Let me see. Oh, the file. Then... Uh, then we have more white spaces. Uh, semicolon. White spaces. And then a type. And then white spaces again. And a close delimiter. And by the way, this is not left delimiter. This, ne this needs to be type left. Type left. And this needs to be type right. Type right. And delimiter. Okay, now let's refactor this madness because this is too, this is too long. Uh, this is already okay. The type for all is done. In our meta language. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, man, I need. I want to abstract out this formula. You see, like you have a type delimit, left delimiter, white space in the beginning, and then a uh, white cares? space uh, star type right delimiter. I kind of want to, but I don't want the name for that. Which name would you use for that? Uh, enclosed type A which is exactly all of that um, type right okay then we just need to call uh, enclosed type and okay done for all is done let's parse it instead of defining the other grammar of the other stuff especially because the other stuff would be very very complicated in, in comparison so let's go to types.hs inside the parser folder and there is a type for all here undefined already this is our grammar This is our grammar, which is already kind of correct, by the way. I get that you there. Yes. Uh, Do we ever had anything that we would need to force at least one space? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't think so. Maybe we do, but I don't know. I, don't, I can't remember. Because most of the time it's going to be uncommon, right? Because we are using S expressions, so like it doesn't matter. But there might be a case where you need a space at least on the middle to separate something. Oh, no, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Uh, oh, this is not correct. Crap. Okay, we can't use the between in this abstract, whatever the hell was this before. The for all, let me think. Because we need to parse the kind, which is in the middle of the stuff, and we also need to parse the type after. Oh, we still can, right? It's just gonna be nastier. Like, like and we need to parse the type variable, and I was almost so forgetting for all, that. For all spaces and this with a dot and then this. Yeah, but this is and wrong because uh, actually this is, this should be like this only right now. Type variable. Wait, what? Then. Yeah, because look, for all, white space plus, uh, this plus we're not doing it. No, 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 but dude, no, wait. Like, you should just make the true outmost thing. So it's the for all and this, uh, 
Coma. Ah, col col semicolon. semicolon. Sorry, no, thank but you. We need, no, but we have this also, man. This is the, the type is the last okay. thing. Okay, yes, but then you just make a do notation and you get the next thing. Wait. Like okay. this. Okay, so you're talking about doing do. this. Yes, let me see. And then we remove this. Then we remove that. Actually, we can do spaces here, but uh, it doesn't matter, I guess. No, but that's and the then thing. Then here we do the thing inside, which is the variable. So in the kind. The variable, the dot, we ignore, and the kind. Oh, okay. And wrapping in a and couple. And then later we, we grow. Oh, okay, I see what you mean. Actually, we need the type now. So let me go to the ST and grab the type. So, okay. Okay, okay. So let's go. So types. Uh, and if you're talking, Akta, we're not hearing you. Uh, okay, so we need to type a parse, a type variable. Then we're going to have some spaces. Then we're gonna have a dot. Dot, yes. And that's kind of the end for this guy. Then we want. Oh, we also can grab the spaces here. Then we need a kind. Uh, so, yes. kind here. Actually, we also want to ignore the. Oh no, we can do just kind here, and in this char, we can just do spaces here also. Okay, okay, that works. But this is the notation, so this means that we need to grab something at the end here. So this is gonna be, I don't know. Uh, well, I don't know, A, B, wait. X, Y. That's it. Wait, wait, wait. This is a T for all info mapped onto all of this crap. Okay, you want to do the map already? Okay. Um, this will return something, which is a function. Then, uh, for all info, it's going to be another denotation. Picking that something and f mapping it to type. Yes. Yeah. So then we are completing the the wrapper, the internal wrapper. Actually. Uh, and actually, why you don't need to do the something with that other thing, right? Oh, the the something is a function, right? So that's yes, why exactly. The, the something is a function. But then shouldn't you do? I think but this wait, is correct. A... But wait, the for all info takes the type, right? And then in the end, you do dash to the for all. Okay. And then we are wrapping with the parentheses also, which is the what is this enclosed type is doing? Actually, mm -hmm. this enclosed type is actually exactly this. <laughs> it is a between char opening parentheses spaces spaces char closing parentheses. It's exactly this. Actually, uh, Nathan's idea of making the meta meta language stronger to be able to express more stuff, uh, it's very handy now because now we see the the perfect parallels. Okay, let's see if this if this compiles. And nope. Oh, of course not. We are not importing stuff. And this file should be kinds. For some random reason, I named him just kind. Uh, we are probably m missing also that that with an error somewhere. No. Okay. And okay, still. Oh, it's not kinds. I'm dumb. It is parser. Okay. 
Variable not in scope, kind. Perhaps you... Oh, there, there isn't a kind, my man. We only have kind parsers. Because kind is a special word. Okay, now we have a type problem. Okay. So it is saying... Oh, we don't need the fmap. This is already a T4O info. Okay. Couldn't match expected type. Oh, of course, this needs to be a parser. So we need some. We we did something very wrong. And I know what what it is. Uh, we need to grab this. F map this guy to here. Remove this guy. H Lynch is probably complaining about something. Functor law. Replace it. Fancy. I like it. <laughs> and we need to rename the something to something actually meaningful. Okay, now we have another type oh. problem. It is complaining that what is this guy complaining? Oh, this is wrong. Uh, a type variable parser returns a parser of a type, but this needs to be a parser of a text. Which means, which means that we want type variable generic. Because I, I assume this is the same thing, but returning text instead of a type. So let's go to the utilities.hs. Yeah, type variable generic. Yeah, it is returning a text indeed. Okay. Are you happy now? Yes. Okay. T for all done. Let's go here. And now this is a to do that is actually done. Okay, next. We have the E type abstraction and the fancy new types that we added last time. Let's go back to the grammar. And try to define what is a type up type abstraction. What is a type abstraction, Maget? It's not Tamil. It. It's his ideas. It's his invention. <laughs> I'm telling you there. Can you talk? One sec, okay. Let me check the ST. This second because I'm replying. So, an E type abstra abstraction is a text, a kind, and an expression. Yeah, it is the same idea of an E type abstraction, but you are passing types which has some kinds. So it should be pretty, pretty similar to the E abstraction, but uh, uh, doing next level, like one one level higher parsing. Uh, okay. Of... Yeah. Hello, Nathan. How's it going, man? Uh, it's going. <laughs> That's not a good answer, but okay. Um. I'm thinking My about My guess is saying it's Nathan's invention. The thing is like older than us, man. Wait, what? Nathan's invention? Oh. Yeah, the thing is older than us, man. I thought you invented it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So, uh, Nathan, I'm thinking about trying to do a fusion of the E-type abstraction with abstraction because we did that with the application and I'm f kind of feeling the same thing. What is in, in, in which sense do you mean that? Yeah, because as far as I can tell, the e, the difference between an e-abstraction and an e-type abstraction is that one is doing receiving a type and returning expression. So, like, receiving something from, I'm going to call it the world number one and returning something of the world zero. And the e-type abstraction receives something of the world two and returns something of the world zero. That's what I'm... Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, you are talking about the those two, right? I yeah. thought we were talking about the the 
tight lambda one. But yeah, I think that I'm not sure how it should be like in all levels, but at least we should have a syntax sugar that allow us to receive like both, you know, like types and expressions, right? Wait, receive expressions, what do you mean? Uh, so abstraction is receiving uh, a value, right? Like an expression. Yeah, it's receiving a, a, a value of some type and returning an expression. Yeah, and type abstraction is receiving a type, right? It's receiving a kind and returning an expression. Uh, no, it's not receiving a kind. It's receiving a type. The E type abstraction? Yeah, the kind there is to qualify this type, right? That he is receiving. Yeah, it is the kind signature of the type that we are receiving with this name. Yeah, so you can see that would be like uh, easier to use, like when programming the language, to have an abstraction, and you can either receive expressions or types, right? You just change the annotation of, oh, is the annotation a type, is the annotation a kind, and then you know it, right? Oh. I think that should be at least one syntax sugar with that. I'm not sure if in, in all levels it should be that way, right? Yeah, but can you go... For example, the lambda. Uh, suppose you have the lambda, right? Ah. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, should it be the case with lambda? Well, I don't know. Will we have like syntax sugar for lambda with multiple parameters? If so, should it be that way mixed? I guess so, but not necessarily, right? I, I think we can discuss that a little bit later because the first thing that I want to know is how would you write uh, any type of abstraction in our language? Can you give us an example? I can't, I guess. So, can you show me how it's a normal abstraction? Uh, yes. A normal abstraction is like this. You have a lambda. With multiple parameters, right? Yes. You have a lambda, and then you receive in close of brackets the, the, the labels with their types, right? And then you have a column, and then the, the return type. But we don't have the return type for the type abstraction. It's something also. Uh, but that's not a not a problem because uh, the e type abstraction also returns an expression, right? Yes. So yeah, you could might as well just have a like return annotation because well we can check that. Okay, okay, but just considering that, how would you write the e type abstraction? Uh, something that you could do is simply extend what you already have, uh, what you already have. Like I was thinking about doing the following. Let's let me see if you agree. So this is some sort of body that I don't care at the moment. Uh, and then this will be, I don't know, this, and then this. We don't need Z in this case. Yeah, it will be, this will be a neat type of abstraction in my mind. Yeah, I think that's... Yeah, only the arrow that you're using the... <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm using the Haskell notation. Which, because in silver, is going to be like this. Yeah. <laughs> just, just imagine, just imagine. Actually, I think you have one more... Uh, what's the name? One more parenthesis, right? On the first one. We well, could because do a syntax, it's like a list just, of just We could even do a syntax sugar, like. Yeah, but that's that's extensions or plugins. Awesome. We can call that, do that later. Uh, can you repeat the last part, Anton? Yeah, uh, repeat what you did before. So yeah, you probably would have a parenthesis right on the first one because you have the list of inputs and. Uh, yeah, no, but uh, we we are not we're not asking for that. If you take a look on the kind uh, type signature, the the arrow it has because it's using the arrow p, and the arrow p naturally requires parentheses, but the single star it's not requiring. Uh, but I mean, how do you describe a arrow type? I guess you are doing that of having like a list of inputs and then the the output, isn't it? Uh, if you have well, an just arrow be the type. Same. If you have a narrow star, it's going to be using this. 
And this is no, no, wait. Oh, oh right. Wait. Yes. I'm not yes. taking a look on the parser. Uh, okay. Go on the examples it is and this. see. This, I think. Yeah, I guess you are doing that with types, right? Yeah, and and kinds, I think. No, yeah, kinds, so... I don't think we are. Where is in the same arrow? Wait, let me double check. Oh, you're correct. Yeah, you are correct. So yeah. if we wanted something, it would be something like this then, like for kind to kind to kind, something like that. A star to yeah. star to star, sorry. But there is a thing, the things regarding the casing of the kind parameter. Uh, like what are the cases that you are using currently of innate files for like anything? What are the ones that you are using so far? Um, we have the identifiers for the variables you mean, right? We have yeah. the type Are variable, which has the restriction that the first letter needs to be capital. And we have the identifiers, which can be anything. But, but we also have the possibility of uh, not allowing certain combinations, certain strings to be, to be, to be variables. So if you just want to make the, the, the star... Uh, not available, just added it here. Uh, and then the, the variable parser will not parse this as a variable. I guess that to avoid like problems, uh, we should do the thing that Maketo was talking about of the quote on the beginning. Because that way we are sure, like, we can do things like just for a bid, we start with a quote. We know that you'll not be confused with the type alias name, right? Wait, uh, Magetta, can you repeat what you did there then? Because I didn't get it. Uh, like to make a distinction between type variables and normal variables, uh, instead of just doing like lowercase or uppercase uh, on each one of them, just do like a quote or something, some like identifier be before, you know? I think this would be okay, like a bang. Yeah, but and if, then can... why is this better than the capital stuff versus no? No, oh, because, dude, like, people wouldn't expect to type something like, I don't know, ABC and this to be a variable. It's better to just allow people Wait, to write get, anything. No, it is the opposite. That's not the only thing, matter, man. man. We have problems, uh, Lemos, with parsing stuff. Because, for example, suppose we have the like declarations, right? You have alias and stuff. And then you allow a uh, type variable to be written the same way as this. Then you don't know which one is which. How do you parse? You need something to distinguish. Wait, uh, uh, this what? What you're talking about? Uh, you have type variables, okay. right? You have, type you have variables. normal you're types. You're talking about these, right? Type variables. Yeah. Yeah. So you have type variables, you have normal types, and you have like types that you declared, right? Uh, some type alias that you, the user, did. Right? Yeah. Us, as the person, as the people writing the parser, we need to know uh, when parsing if the thing is a type alias or a type variable, right? So you could do something like, oh, the type alias, it's written the same way as the primitive types that are already in the language, right? Oh. Wait a sec. But then, how do we distinguish from the type variables no, if, if they are written the same way? We already solved this problem, but we, we, we have the room parser. If you guys go to the grammar, you mm -hmm. notice that the type variable is already adding something in the beginning of the identifier. Oh, okay, yes. We already solved this last time. Yeah, that's true. Which okay. means that now the parsers are wrong. <laughs> okay, but this should be like very easy to solve. So if you go to the type variable, Go to the type ver utilities, type variable generic. Instead of upper, this should be just be char. Uh, what is upper? I'll oh, put the bang, man. It's better. You want the bang instead of uh, yes. a quote for the type variable? Because quote is for symbols. Like, it does make sense for that. that okay, so it's going to be a, this. <laughs> 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 Only Magetta, man. Only Magetta. I love his language, man. <laughs> oh, 
Holy freaking my git. Uh, uh, hey, by the way, uh, we also had the problem with applications, right? Did we solve it? What do you mean? Uh, what was the problem with applications? Like, we are applying stuff, right, on the, the, the function. And how do we know if we are applying types or if we are applying... Oh, we use alternative, we use the either and then we pattern match. And then ah. to do the to do the no to, that the doesn't curve. that doesn't answer me. Uh, what I mean is, suppose they can be written the same way, like both uppercase, then we have a problem, right? Both which what you're talking about? Type and expressions. Well, variables, right? Expressions. Specifically, variables, right? But n do we types. have do we have an expression that starts with a capital letter? Well, you said that variables could be anything. No, I said that it didn't, variables in the in this sense, right? Variables in this this one. Yes, this one. This mm -hmm. is an expression. How do we know that we are not confusing that with a type that can also have the same case? In? Like we don't. Uh, yeah, we don't. Is this only a te this is only text, right? We're not enclosing with brackets, as far as I remember. Yeah, we are not. Yeah. So we don't. So you would have to do something like disallow starting with the uppercase on variables or something to distinguish for sure. Are you okay with that, Maget? Disallowing to start with the capital letter. <laughs> I still don't see the problem with the capital letter if we had something before the capital letter. No, that's another solution. Engineering. That's another solution to have something before the, the, the name. But then we I need it to be like Pascal, where like I don't know, man. Yeah, but I'm very concerned about pollution. We are we are adding like random symbols to our right, stuff. Yeah, 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 man. It's the price of progress. It's the industrial revolution. <laughs> <laughs> and look where we are. <laughs> oh man, this was so magenta. There's no way. Uh, I'm but just yeah, even the if times, that's why. Mm. Even if you choose some symbol for that, you still need to change like some other things probably. Like you have to use those on. Oh. Yeah, you would have to use those and also in other like identifiers for types and maybe even the primitives, right? If you don't want some weird precedence of parsing. But there is something you could do. You could use on of my get a symbol. But not on the identifier, but making part of the application syntax. So, for example, like people do that way. Like, take a look on the chat. Yeah. That's a normal application, and that's applying a type on a e type express e type abstraction, right? Wait. Uh, what is the thing on the left and the, and the thing on the right? The left is the function, the right is the argument. Yeah, but the argument is the... Is that on the, the, on the, the type of case, a certain, certain kind, right? On the second case is a type, on the first case is an expression. How do we know? The brackets. We could use some kind of symbol like that to be present only on the application. So we can know the difference, right? They it fires itself. Could be whatever. You don't need the special symbol there. Only when doing applications. Okay, that's a, that's actually that's another option. So, what do you prefer, Magita? To ha what do you think of that, Magita, of angle brackets? Yeah, that looks okay, but it looks like TypeScript. <laughs> In that sharp, right? Uh, yeah, F sharp looks like TypeScript. In that case, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know how Java. I feel. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know how I feel about that. We need I, I'm, I'm some still, symbol. I'm still pro the French Revolution, to be honest. <laughs> oh, not the French Revolution, the Industrial Revolution. <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, but then, which expressions we would have to add uh, extra syntax, Nathan? Application, I guess. Application, I guess. I guess it's the only place where you could receive, you could like, you could have like types and expressions appearing on the same way. 
let's go one by one. So in the let, we have brackets surrounding, uh, we have a space separating the text and the expression. But we don't have types here. You said that the problem is types and expressions. The E abstraction, uh, this type and this expression, they are totally separate by brackets, so we don't have a problem. Uh, and you said that the E, the e, the e application, uh, because the, this application can be a, a, a an E variable, right? Which is the just text. But we are also using the E type, and then we don't have the, you have to separate this from this. That's that's why we need the extra syntax, right? Yes. Okay. I don't think we have any other case of that. The applications will be very ugly, but okay. I'm fine with that. So what is an application? Is the left element to white space expression? White space expression. Do we want the angle the angle brackets to be in normal applications or in E type applications? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do we want this extra part of the syntax to be in normal applications or in E type applications? You mean to denote if it's a type or yeah. an expression? Yeah. I would be <laughs> really <laughs> surprised if that was to describe the expression. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's fair. So let's just copy this guy, put it here, uh, and then uh, we need... I will have dinner, I'll be back in a second. Okay. Then we're going to have a white space star, open brackets, white space. Okay, so... Another, another cool guy here. I'm gonna call you in close expression for now. And then write delimiter. And then the E type application. This is type application. This is gonna be enclosed expression. Then I can remove all of this and this. Expression, white space, open angle brackets, then more white space, then the, then the, well, the rest of the stuff, right, the, the, the right part, then white space, and close angle brackets. Okay, cool. Uh, Not bad, not bad at all. Yeah, we are kind of lying in our grammar, right? If you are doing both applications as one, then our grammar is just lying. <laughs> um, you are correct, indeed. But at this point in time, it's going to be very, like, meh to, to dismember them in the, <laughs> the parsing, because that took a long time to make. On the parsing, you mean? Yeah. The parsing is already done, isn't it? Of the application? Yeah, application... No, it's not, because I need to add the angle brackets. Yeah, but... Uh, on that, right? Yeah. Oh, it's so much cleaner, man. And then you also is enclosed. Type delimiter, white space, yeah, this guy can also die. All of this is gone. What else? What else? What else? What else? Okay, 
Last, last thing into the grammar though, type abstraction. So what is a type abstraction, Matteo? It is the same thing as an abstraction. So it should be very similar to something like this. But instead wait, of wait, 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 wait. Can't, can't we just take the route of not lying again? Like since the thing is not done already. What do you mean by not done? Uh, like if we intend to make the both abstractions the same, then why don't no, we do that don't, thing? I, I don't know if we intend on doing that. That was just an idea that I had. Oh, okay, okay. We can intend on doing that. So if you have a, a great idea, we can try. Well, what you already like asked, then we and we said how could be done, right? Do we? Like, sure. Like you show how the kind would be, and uh, it's just doing the <laughs> the following. Oh, is either that or the same, but with types instead of kinds, right? Yeah, that was my 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 feeling. And we can just we can even add the type here to be even more similar. <laughs> Oh yeah, but that's regarding something else. This is regarding that's the return true. type. Yeah. No, but now it's even more similar. <laughs> yeah, and we need that if we are going to do that way. Because if the last thing is receiving a type, what well, I don't... Doesn't make sense. Yeah, I guess it does. So yeah, if the last thing is a type, then the... Wait, 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 wait. You you don't have a way to to know based on on the last one if it is a if it is a e, e abstraction or e type abstraction. Yeah. Which is a different yeah. trick that which is the trick that we used before, right? We check wait, if the wait. last one is an expression, and if it is, we do the fold folding within application, and if it's a uh, type. No, we, we don't do that checking the last one, do we? I think we do. Oh, we check just wait, wait. We check the first. Oh no, we wrap. Yeah, with left and the right. first need to be. A... No, we check with left or right. Never mind. Never mind. Uh, so what I was thinking is the following. Uh, we could do the same thing then. To the wait, wait, wait. Suppose we have two parameters. The first is an expression. The last is receiving a type. So what that would you to us, it's a function that returns a type of abstraction, right? So which one of those would have the return type annotation? How are we doing with that? No, the, the abstraction is here. Um, okay, where's the return annotation? There. Uh, what are we doing with that? We basically do an option maybe with type P, and if it's there, it is going to be a just, and if it's not there, it's going to be a nothing, and that's it. I think it's Wait. basically doing the same crap that we did for a e expression application with doing the no. either. What I mean is the following ones. Uh, uh, suppose we have the lambda that is receiving both. The first is an expression, the second is a type. What is the de sugar of this, right? It's a EST node of an abstraction that returns a type of abstraction, right? Wait, you receive a, you receive a, wait, can you repeat again? What are you going to receive? I, I will type it. If you receive an expression a type, it is, it is an E abstraction, right? Wait. So I typed on the chat. Yeah. So it's a function so. that receives an A and an integer. So this is an E, this is an e abstraction, right? Already. Uh -huh. And then it receives then uh, another stuff which, which has a kind. So it is an E abstraction that is receiving an E type abstraction. No, not that it's receiving, that we return, right? Yeah, well, it will return, but it's a function. That's what I meant. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, you saying those things clarify to me. The 
return annotation needs to be on the inner one because he will be the one that will like return the body itself right the others will return other functions right yeah that makes sense wait so, it should be the inner or the outer one the inner one the inner one you said the inner one Are we doing that? Yeah, that's my question. <laughs> the abstract, right? <laughs> what are we doing with that? <laughs> we grab the args and then we pick the last out of them, which is a tuple. Because it needs to be the initial thing for the folder, right? Yeah, it's called first. <laughs> Oh, it's the return type, right? Yeah. Oh, so okay, so we, we are already doing that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So then <laughs> we can just f fusionite the EF type abstraction with the expression abstraction. We just need to do the same trick that we use with the either. So let me just go to the grammar and finish the this the stuff. We're gonna oh, have but... to we're gonna have to think in a uh, uh, later how we're gonna make. Uh, in a single line of grammar, choose things that are completely different. We don't need to do a single line of grammar. Well, isn't that what you mean when we're, we said that we're cheating? I, yeah, but take a look. <laughs> you can <laughs> you can put the different parts on other names and then just do an R on the part that is uncommon, right? That is common. Mm. Uh, but... Wait, I think I forgot what I was about to say. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> it totally forgot. <laughs> yeah, it's gone. It's done. Uh, so it's gone. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna rename this to expression parameters. Oh, okay, now I remember. Uh, so if we not take a bit of care and pay a bit of attention, it, it will be a horrible code, man. Like, I'm just trying. <laughs> it will be a horrible code. <laughs> oh, no, no, actually, I'm, oh, okay, I was confused. I was thinking we were adding stuff on the application one that already has the either stuff and, and such and such, but that's not the case, right? Yeah, that's okay then. Uh, one last thing, Lemos. Uh, we are just checking that, like, regarding the application parser, we are just checking that the first one is an expression, right? We are not checking if it's an abstraction. Uh, no. We're not doing what you said, so I think we're good. Wait, no. <laughs> what are we doing? We are checking if it is a left or a right, because if it's a left, it means that we grabbed an expression. Oh, okay, nice. And if it's a right, it means that we grabbed a, a type. This should be sure we were not only accepting <laughs> abstracts on <only. laughs> oh, yeah. the first no, one, right? No, 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 we're not doing that. Uh, just, just let me finish this grammar. So this guy, Will be type. Yeah, that's it, right? So if you think about it, if you look one one close to the other, look. Let me see. I still need to take a look on the others, but I feel that's just wrong. Yeah, it's wrong indeed. You don't want to do list or list. You want to do a list of something 
that this something is or well it's something no, 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 or but I, i'm not saying no I'm, this is not the final form of oh, okay, but... the grammar description i'm just saying that in the naive approach uh this is how they look mm -hmm. and they look like that so it's exactly the same apart from one crap which it is that the how the parameters or are crap. described yes uh so i don't know i'm gonna call this universal abstraction i guess which is gonna be a which is gonna be all of that oh. but instead of this guy actually this is gonna be abstraction and then the universal abstraction will be abstraction using expression parameters or abstraction using type parameters. Wow, I'm very surprised. Yeah, but we still need to, to do stuff, right? So, wait a second. Oh no, this, this I'm conf I'm making confusions. This is not it. We what we want is this. Now we have a universal abstraction, and we also need to do the same for application. What is the application difference? I think it's this guy, right? Sometimes this is a type, sometimes this is an this is an expression. Okay, so we're gonna have we're gonna have an application like that, which I just reminded myself that uh, where is our stuff? Oh, it's here. This is the all the constructors like substitution requires parentheses. Uh, and this will be the universal uh, application, which is going to be ap application uh, applying expression, or it's going to be an application applying type. And then in here, in the expression stuff, we have universal stuff. Wow. Okay, go on. Wait a second. I need to die. we need to separate this this crap so i'm going to call these basic units uh, i wonder what the fuck is our criteria to say it's a basic unit no it's ours i don't really care we are the dictators of this madness <laughs> yeah but it, <laughs> it becomes hard to use it <laughs> to know what should be there I think you only have atoms there, right? And the things you need. No, not really. You have like uh, parentheses and such. Mm. Yeah, everything else is not basic. So this is the basic. So I'm gonna. Now it's just a matter of reordering. So what do we want first? I think we want top down. I think that makes more sense. So the, the topest is these two. So this is the most that is agglomerating more information than everything else. Then I think it comes expression, which is this guy. Yeah, it just becomes weird if you think in terms of precedence, because then you have the first one that they are the ones that have the most precedence, and then you do the the opposite. Uh, 
This is not basic. Wait, what is that? The literal is not basic? <laughs> yeah, I want just the string stuff to be basic. Uh, then we have the universal application, which is already here. Oh, that's a really weird criteria, man. Then we have the universal uh, abstraction, which is here. Then we have the variable and the condition. Which are all here. Okay, then we have type declaration, value, and functions, which you don't have yet, so it's fine. Wow, what is the difference between <laughs> expression and value? This. Oh, it's a value declaration, right? Yeah. And why is the other not just type instead of? It's like type declaration. What do you mean? Go we also there. Have declaration. Yeah, yeah, but why is the other is not called type that value declaration? Oh, because no. Reason. And the functions there is just like a. A syntax sugar for doing the function, but starts with other keywords, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, this guy has whatever name that I still need to decide. But I want to make constructors, oh. which is this notation that we just introduced. And what the fuck do you mean by constructors, dude? Uh, this notation that we just introduced, that should just sub basically start substitution, is where all the A's live. <laughs> okay, this is our expression stuff. Oh no, the type declarations are already here. Cool. So they will come here. This is also uh, an A. So it goes here. So this is all the when you want to enclose stuff. Oh, maybe enclosable, encloses. Now we have all of this, which is basically auxiliary stuff for uh, expression. So I'm going to put there. Okay, then we have kind stuff. Okay. okay, so this is not in the way anymore. And if you want to know what is the enclosed stuff, you just scroll down. <laughs> what about the other random ones as the last one? Okay, I'm doing? gonna no? call this general. Oh, here we go with the SD. Expression. This is our expression stuff. At some point in time, we're gonna have types. What is a type? It is described in here. So we need the type atom. Where is the type atom? It's, oh, it's only strings, okay. We need the type arrow, which is this. We need the type variable, this. We need the for all, which is this. Then type abstraction, uh, that we, didn't, we don't have yet, and type application, which we also don't have yet. Uh, Identifier is up there. Kind is down there. 
typed parameter is this being used in the type section no it's not so it shouldn't be here and also the kinded parameter so these are all expression stuff the type application Wait, the type application Dude. we do have <laughs> I just noted uh, do you know the labs that we have besides the the mutually recursive one all the other ones can be described just using like abstraction application I guess oh. yes I guess wait can you repeat that uh, I guess that we don't really need the node of flats aside from the mutually recursive ones because the one that is in parallel in which they do not divide scope the things on the lab that could be described as an abstraction where the body it's the body of the lab and the things on the binds are arguments and the lab that is sequential but not mutually recursive the ones can be just described as like abstraction inside abstraction and abs wait can <laughs> wait 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 and there's another problem, Nathan. Now that I can see this thing written like this, we can't we can't have the type application and the normal application. Let me just explain to my get. My get, we're just reorganizing the grammar mm -hmm. document. Um, and and Nathan uh, had a, a brilliant idea of uh, being able to express both abstractions and e-type abstractions in a single universal sort of abstraction. Yeah, that's still wrong, and the idea is just called an R, uh, R. Yeah, that is the R, right? Very easy. Uh, and it's the same, the abstraction is, it is the same construction, just changing what is in the parameters. Sometimes you have, you need to have kind of notations, and sometimes you need to have type annotations. And that's the way that we differentiate between the E abstraction and the E type abstraction. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, I'm, I don't think it's possible to do the same stuff with application, Atan. Because the normal application, uh, it doesn't have these angle brackets, right? Man. Yeah. So let's start with the abstraction. Uh, why is the abstraction wrong? It's not. For me, it's right. I'm still waiting for an explanation. So, see, you cannot describe the following. Are you type on the chat? With some like other random syntax. You cannot do that like according to this grammar. Why is the case? Not do that. Yeah, you can't do that. Like, we, you shouldn't be able to do that. Oh, isn't that the whole point? Or you just want to, like, spare some space on the grammar stuff? No, uh, this is what you're talking about, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, this is not correct. If you want to do that in Silver Air, you're going to have to do something along the lines of this. Oh, okay, you don't want the list to be heterogeneous, right? Exactly. Mm, I see, I see, okay. You can only do uh, the least stuff if you are in the in the same sort, let's say. Mm -hmm. So, or you have a list of types, or you have a list of, uh, of type annotations with the names, or you have a list of names and kind notations. Yeah, but the, the application one is easy. Like, you have the first one that is an expression, and the rest is a list that is either one thing or the other. One of the things is an expression, the other is angle brackets with the type on the middle, right? Angle brackets with the type in the middle. Angle brackets with the type in the middle. Wait a sec. I think I'm, I'm not understanding. Yeah, so the angle brackets you want to be enclosing the type? Yeah. Okay. So let me just uh, go to the grammar again. So let me see. Application. 
Oh, you mean here. Um, yeah, so this will be angle. And then after that. Oh, no, no. Wait, wait. That's not. Ah. Uh, that isn't too far as me. Yeah, this will work. Ah. Uh, let me see what application is. It's this. Application is. Oh, okay. Wait, there's something. Okay, you have the parentheses there because you are passing stuff to enclosed expression, right? Yeah. And the enclosed expression is the limiter. Okay, literally just something in the middle. The, the yeah. thing. And you have expression. And then you just at least one white space and then you have a and now okay universal application is either this or the other I'm feeling that's wrong I'm feeling that it's correct, so you are drawing. Yeah, it's a draw. I, <laughs> I think the R needs to be between the thing that you are passing to application. Otherwise, you cannot do a heterogeneous application, I guess. Wait, so can you repeat that? Yeah, I think that the R should be between expression and the angle bracket with types being passed to application. Because otherwise, I don't think you can do a heterogeneous application. You mean like this? Yes, I guess so. Okay. Okay. And then we have the kind stuff. And then we have the other categories that we need to develop. Okay, I think this is, uh, aside from like the enters and stuff like that, this is actually smaller than what it was. But okay, uh, which is progress. Okay, so then, now that we have this idea of universal stuff, now our grammar is not cheating with our implementation, right, Nathan? I guess so. Because now, because previously, Mageta, we were doing like this, right? We did the application. We combined one parser to do both types of applications. One that has uh, e type application, e, e application. And then I was discussing with Nathan about doing the same thing with abstraction, right? And then he said, yeah, but that would be cheating, right? Because our grammar is describing separately. Well, the problem is not only describing separately, they were describing different stuff. Yeah, that's also true. Uh, Magetta, are you there? Yes. Okay. Uh, and then, now that we have this idea of, oh, everything is application, we just need to do a couple wars here and there to make it, like, uh, um, enclose both sorts of, uh, of abstraction and application, respectively, then we're not cheating anymore. So we can just go to here, and we can kill this guy, which means killing this guy also. And then we just need to think on how to do both of them on bo on top of abstraction because abstraction is already working. So let's grab you know, the grammar. Uh, so what what matters is the parameters basically. That's the, the thing that we need to pay attention. Where are we grabbing the parameters? Here, arg and type. So we need another stuff called arg and kind. <laughs> Kind, which I'm basically going to copy paste for now. Uh, this is going to be kind. Uh, okay, let's do this in arg, arg and 
uh, that receives an A. And then you can put the A here. Because it's basically the same stuff. Then. Then we, hit, we need to do the same cheating that we did last time. So one you need to say it's going to be left. So F map left. Mm -hmm. Right. Let me see. Where are you and doing this? Um, type P. Yes. Alternative off f map right arg and actually this needs a dollar okay and this also and kind p yes I guess so so now we need to understand why it's not it is complaining now oh no it's just h lint. Yeah. Replace this. Uh, yeah, move brackets to avoid. Move brackets to avoid. Oh, it's it's to remove these brackets and put them here. And the same thing with this. Remove these and put them here. Okay. So now, although I don't have the type annotation here, I think that the arcs it, it, it is a list of or types. Uh, names uh, binded with types or names binded with kinds, which is what we want. So now, oh, and something that we also added, Magetta, we added the return type to the e type uh, abstraction also. So now the, the e abstraction, mm -hmm. e type abstraction, they are basically the same. In the only difference is that one receives a, a, a label that mm -hmm. has some type, mm -hmm. and the other one has a label, it has some kind. So okay, so now what we need to do, this is basically grabbing the last one. Uh, we, this is con this will continue. Now we need to do this case that we did on the e expression application. So let's just copy that for now. So yeah, like that. So okay. now. Just a second. I'm going to assume that this is going to be abstraction because I did this last time and it worked and this is going to be type of uh, abstraction uh, args okay do we care uh, uh, Nathan if our list of arguments has one single element or has more than one element do we care about that uh. I, I don't think don't so. Don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. So I think it's gonna be like this, but we need to care about both cases. So, you know, rest, rest. This should never happen, which is also true. Okay. So what if we have a right, right? So what that means that we have a right? It means that we have a kind. That, that, that is what it means. So if you have a kind, what should we do about that? think let me think Lemos. <laughs> Go. something is wrong man what is wrong? i don't know I, I don't know where uh, no, no, that something is wrong i know that's for sure okay but maybe not the same thing you're thinking about so you said that we would not be able to do <laughs> The thing that I described on the chat, right? The last message. But that's the part that you wrote. No, I didn't write anything yet. I just copy pasted from application. Yeah, but take a look on args. Args is describing that kind of stuff. Line 47. You're doing a list 
and the elements have a or instead of doing or this list or the other list. Oh, so this is not aligned with the grammar then. So I need to change or the grammar or the implementation. Yeah, that's why I don't know what is wrong. <laughs> Oh no, but we are, you are correct. Remove this, remove this. Yeah, now we are aligned now. So it is indeed possible to do what you said. Wait, 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 uh, you have to keep on. Like, <laughs> uh, either, well, both expression parameters and type parameters both describe a list of something, right? Yeah. So then it's the same thing that you that you was before. You're not describing a list of things that is either one thing or the other. You are describing either a list of something or a list of something else. Take a look on the definitions of expression parameters and type parameters. Uh, expression parameters, it has an enclosed expression, then it has a typed parameter, which is this, an identifier with a type, and uh, typed param type parameters, it has the same thing but with a kind. I know how to make it though. You copy this. By the way, what is typed parameter versus type parameters? One is in singular and the other one is in plural. This yeah, is describing but... one one couple, like one identifier and one type, oh. and the other one is describing a list of them. Oh, okay. But there's a way to make it generic. Now you Just have only parameters, here. right? Yeah, I just need parameters. Uh, I just need parameters. Parameters. Which is going to be this. Or the nesting. Because this is parameter A. Holy shit. Yeah, it's it's it, <laughs> it's not nested. <laughs> but now it is possible to make to make it. You know why? Because now instead of describing like this, I can just say, okay, you're gonna be an abstraction of parameters, in which the parameters can be both. It can be uh, a type or a kind. Yeah, then you don't have the necessity of. <laughs> This. We don't have, I don't have the necessity of this. Oh, no, you just don't want a middle, middle definition, I see. Uh, yeah, why do we need parameter A again? Because parameter A is describing how it, the relationship between a name and, a, and something, and the parameters is describing multiple relations of this sort. Okay, so the parameter is an fine. identifier in something, and the parameters is a bunch of these parameter, but in, 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 in together. What is enclosed type? Enclosed type is just yeah. like type left the limiter, okay. Yeah. Uh, and that's not really enclosed type, it's enclosed parameter, right? Uh, yes. Uh, but let me see if I got it. Uh, you are just describing generic parameter there, and you can get one or the other, and then you're just describing the list of it. Yes. Close with expression. Holy, that second part is... <laughs> 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 Wait, why do you need the out parentheses, man? You don't, right? Uh... Oh, yeah, it should be like... Oh, the outer. No, 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 I do need, I do need the outer. You need the other yeah, one. every single way, every single time you use an enclosed stuff, you wrap oh. everything in parentheses. Okay. Yeah, but then this is wrong because this this is should be like this. Oh, okay. Now it's more clear. So then you have a group 
that is a generic parameter and a white space, white space afterwards. <laughs> but you cannot have zero, right? <laughs> yeah, you cannot have zero, I guess. So the last star of the line 41, I think it's a plus, right? No, it is a, a list of parameters with only one parameter. But if you have the star, it can be zero parameter, right? Oh, yeah, I think I, we did it this way before because of the unit. You know, we were thinking about using, like, oh, if you pass nothing, is a function that receives a unity or something. Yeah, but that's not passing nothing on the application. That's for the abstraction. Man, I'm, I'm thinking of doing the other way around. Instead of wrapping everything, I'm going to just wrap the argument. Yeah, but this way, I think, is ambiguous, Lemos, because how do I know if you are, like, not just grouping the other part, right? <sighs> Wrong. How do I know that you don't mean that is abstraction and the other thing that is on? Wait, I'm confused. Can you repeat that? Yes. I'm thinking about how do you know that what you are describing there, it's not, oh, the first thing and the second thing that happens to be on the, on the parentheses. Uh, oh, okay. Yes. Okay. I okay, saw. So. Because that's not the same grouping as bracket, right? Yeah, the bracket the same would be the, the other grouping, I guess. And then all of these guys die. Okay, that's effectively a, a function call. And these guys are also in closed stuff? Yeah, but then we are using, using it wrong on line 39. 39, let me check. Yeah, after the R. Uh, oh, you mean here? Yeah, so there should be brackets, right? There oh, wait. should be brackets. Oh, you don't need, right? I don't need. Yeah, you don't need nothing, I guess. Wow, this is getting smaller, man. I'm surprised. I would not say easier. <laughs> yeah, no. But... Smaller. <laughs> With easier, I mean easier to read, right? Well, but I think now it is possible. You can have a list of ver uh, heterogeneous stuff. I think so. Yeah. Okay, so now that we have that, can we can go back to the stuff here. So now my question is, my question is, this is correct. I cannot uh, uh, erase this. So I think that the answer will be combining the these adding these args, which now is a list of either, adding them in in here some, of somehow. Wait. What do you? Oh, okay, okay. You want to check? Well, you need to check, and depending on those, you either mount a new abstraction or a new type of abstraction, exactly. right, inside the. Yeah, I think that this uh, function here will be different. Wait, uh, why are we doing the, the case on args there? We are not. I copy pasted from the e e uh, application parser just to have an idea how we did before. When we did yeah, the e-expression. E we can delete that part, right? Uh, yes, we can. Why is that doing right? Uh, this function is for folding. I don't know if we need that. Probably not. Here's the first problem. Yeah, here's the first problem. This needs to be a case in which uh, we do a case off. And maybe it's going to be a left of two things. Oh, for and the first one, and right? Maybe we're gonna have a right of the same two things. So, Dude, what the fuck is that? On, <laughs> that you are passing to folder. Oh, this oh. is the this is the what fancy the version. Fuck, yeah, it took me a while. You already left when I did this. What? what the fuck <laughs> <is that? laughs> Why would one this next thing? Uh, oh, shit. 
So I will not worry about the dead dust. Yeah. So, okay, you are checking because the oh, initial I know, I know, argument I know, I know, I know, I know, for the know. folder. Wait. We need to, to decide, right? Yeah. Just a sec. Now let. This is gonna be. I don't know. To curry. And. And this is gonna be first. Yes. Then we do like that. Then we're gonna just pick. If it's a left. If it's a left, we need we need a uh, type P. Type P. It is in a normal abstraction, which means that you're gonna do uh, E abstraction, and the first will be this. I think the only thing we need is a function match left or right, and depending on that, you return either E abstraction no, or E. No, we need both. Sorry. We need a function, and we need the first. Uh. Oh, okay, yeah, because they have different types, right? Yeah, they have different types. And then in the in here we put to curry, and that should be it. What are you complaining? Possibly incorrect indentation. Are you f f complaining about this? No. Why is this complaining? And you want a tuple, right? Yeah, I am returning a tuple. Oh. oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now it, it works. Okay, I think... I think... Wait, how does that work, though? What, like, what, is, what is your question, then? How can you use E abstraction and E type abstraction in the same way? Don't they, like, perceive different stuff? Like, one receives kind and the other type. That doesn't matter but at all, because everything is in doesn't. the... It doesn't. Why? Wait, you said something important. That's the two curry, right? And we are using that. <laughs> two curry and curry. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck I think it's easier if we go back to the previous code before changing. No, 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 no. I don't believe. It. No, no, no. I think Thank it's gonna be easier to explain. I just and I also need to check something. Oh, what so, that's doing, right? Uh, Parser expression here. So if you take a look, before, right, before we were picking the last argument, uh, the last tuple of the args that we parsed, assuming it would be types all the time. Then we create the first accumulator, which is this, which is using. E abstraction and now it should be using E abstraction or E type abstraction, right? And then, and then, uh, and then these args are basically uh, the, sa the, the, the same list as before, but we found the last because the last we already. What the fuck is the init, man? Init is a function that picks a list and returns a list without the last element. Really? Yeah. <laughs> the, so, because we already used the last one. Okay. So, and then we pick the first accumulator, which we, ju we just created, and then we keep folding using this monstrosity that I created <laughs> back then. Okay. Uh, but then we have a problem, right? Because before, this was a list of tuples. Now this is a list of eaters of tuples. It's a list of eaters of tuples. What well, doesn't make a bit of sense because both, like, both well, left side of the tuple doesn't need to be in the either, right? But that's okay. No, it needs to be in the either. We cannot eliminate the, the left and the right because both matter for us. No, no, what I mean is you have a tuple with both items. The first item, it's always the same thing, right? The first item is always the same thing. I'm confused. Yeah, we have a tuple of a name. And a kind or type, right? Yes. So you see that the R is only on the second part of the tuple? Oh. But doesn't make much difference, really. Yeah, but uh, anyway, any, anyway, we need to pay attention now because the function that does the folding 
It needs to be a very smart function now. It cannot be this, just this that I did. I would not say very smart. <laughs> No, but then, it needs to match. No, no, no. This worked back then. I was and I was very proud of it. Uh, no, no. What I mean is, you said that now it needs to be a very smart function. The very smart thing that you said is regarding matching the either and mounting one thing goes the other, right? That's not very smart. Yeah, it is smart because it's more lines. It's, it's more complicated than just what I did. Uh, so Hugo, one second. Okay, man, so I, uh, it sucks. I gotta go because people are having computer problems. How much time do we have left? Oh, an hour and 56 minutes. I think we can end here. What do you think? I think it's okay. Uh, I can finish this after, after I finish helping people. So I'm going to stop the recording now.